time for some old-fashioned short track racing. And one of the best venues you're going to see in the American Flat Track Championship. It's the New York Short Track from Weed Sport with the stars of AFT ready to bang bars. Flat Track Motorcycle Racing. Just to recall what it was like in the beginning, let us take a quick look back at the turn of the century. century. It takes stout lads like them to go for this kind of competition. It's trials like this that have made the two-wheel little giant the tough piece of mechanism it is today. Take a look at this motorcycle. Each of today's races draws large crowds from all over the country. It's a revolution. Testing and bettering, testing and perfecting. Right up, cowboy. The wave of the future. You got a good start anyway. Yeah, and we'll see how hot I was the whole time. Every chance I get to race now, I enjoy it. What will you do? How hard are you willing to go? Will you let fear win? Or will you rise? Big one for Jeremy. The fine victory. Shayna Hester takes the win. It changes the way we look at racing. Briar Bauman still smiling, but his points lead has been severed severely by not finishing our last race while Jared Meese, working on three straight titles, won it to close in. And don't forget the wizard, Jeffrey Carver, who seems to be rounding into form here in midseason. Would love to take the victory here in New York. In our singles division, the RMR Honda rider, Mikey Rush, has been the hottest rider as of late and has taken over the series lead. But the ever-talented Dalton Gote, the comeback kid, continues to stalk him in the standings. And don't forget the hometown hero, Ryan Wells, out of New York, always capable of taking wins on his Estenson Yamaha. So those are just some of the stars that the fans have come to watch. Jason Wygant going to give you the call today with A.J. Allmendinger, Kristen Beat reporting from the racetrack. Lots of cool things to see here in New York, but the real stars are these guys at the top of the AFT Twin standings. Yeah, Briar Bauman, Dean Eft at Lima, Ohio, Jared Meese, Got the victory, has the momentum. Can he come in here and get another victory to close this gap even more? And really, that would put some pressure on Bauman. Let's get a recap from the top three in the series. He is in route to winning the Daytona TT in dominant fashion. Briar Bauman wins. Brandon Robinson wins in Atlanta. And that is an emotional winner on the 44. Jared Meese has taken his first win of 2019. Leading the championship is, is a huge deal for me. I wanted to be in this position last year, but I didn't really think it was going to be a reality. Um, I think that I've over exceeded my expectations by a lot. My goal was just to be consistent on all the different racetracks, and I think that we've done that. The 14 decides it's go time, and he uses that high line to get the lead. As far as going forward the rest of the season, I guess we're getting close to halfway. I, not really thinking championship. This is uh, this is still kind of a dream ride for me right now. I'm trying to just do my job every weekend. Doesn't matter what the racetrack is. Just try and do the best I can and, and continue to be consistent. I have a, a great team in Indian Motorcycle powered by Progressive. The SNS guys are giving me everything they can, and, and I'm just trying to make myself better every weekend. That's all I can really ask. Checkered flag is out. Huge win for Jared Meese. He takes Lima. So we're second in points. Uh, I think we're 13 down now. Big change in events after Lima, you know, went out there and got the got the job done and won the race, and Breyer had a misfortune there, but I've had two of them, and he's had one, and uh, it tightened things up pretty good. This, this marks, after today, exactly halfway in the season, and I'm pretty excited for the second half with all the miles and uh, some racetracks, I think, that'll be my forte. Being third in the points this season is a huge rebound from the last couple of years for me, and uh, feeling good about the position I'm in, and unfortunately, the last couple of races haven't quite went my way. Some, a little bit of bad luck, crashing, uh, you know, Riding a little injured, and then like just having that DNF at, at Lima really hurt us a lot. So uh, just looking to rebound here in New York. You know, this is a really a track that I feel is in my wheelhouse, and uh, I feel like uh, we have a good shot at bringing home the win tonight. So I'm, I'm looking forward to that and trying to get back in this championship hunt. Always fun to come to New York, especially in the summertime. About a half hour away from Syracuse, we got a pit party here to kick this thing off. Lots of different things to do, even for the riders. with Ryan Wells, Shayna Texter battling on tricycles. They go a lot faster on the race bikes. Let's talk about this actual race track. Riders are always going to race, Jason. Mm -hmm. Three eighths of a mile here at Weed Sports Speedway. Race last year, Jeremy's won that. They reconfigured Turn One just a little bit. 
but what this track allows is for multi-groove racing. We're going to see bikes low, middle, high. It's going to be a fantastic race. Ah, you love to see the multiple lines. Let's send it down to Kristen Beat for more. This is only the second time the American Flat Track Series has raced at Weed Sports Speedway in New York, but guys, it is already becoming a fan favorite due to the unique racing that this track forces. Last year, it was a 3 8 mile D-shaped oval, but this year they did some reshaping, but turns one and two still not exactly parallel with three and four. When I talked to the hometown boy, Ryan Wells, he told me that is going to create some elevated adversity for these riders. He also told me that managing your gearing on this track is gonna be extra tricky. So definitely a challenge for those riders tonight. And here's two of the riders the fans will really be rooting for. We've got a pair of New Yorkers on the Estenson Racing Yamaha team. They each have a championship in the singles class. Colby Carlisle here, the Flying Tomato, has moved up to twins. But let's let the two New Yorkers interview each other. Hey, man, what's going on? Colby Carlisle. I'm Ryan, man. So you're from here in New York? Where oh, at? Oh, yeah, LV, New York, man. Mm. How about you? Canandaigua, New York, just 40 miles down the road. So you're real close. Both. New Yorkers, but you're way close. Yeah, pretty close. This is definitely my hometown race. Yeah, what's the biggest difference for you this year now going on to the twin from the single? Jumping from the single to the twin, you know, it's both a Yamaha, but this one's got double the horsepower, uh, 100 more pounds, and quite a few different things, you know, custom chassis. So it's been a bit adjustment. Uh, the bikes are a bit smaller for me. I'm a bigger guy, but I think I've been adjusting well. Uh, left my kneecap in Arizona, so we're just trying to fix that. Huge wreck in the background there. Been a rough go for Carlisle, has shown speed since jumping on the twin, but he has had all sorts of bad luck. So as a racer, you know, we always get great memories. What's your favorite since you've started? Definitely got to be 2016, being here in New York at, at our hometown race and wrapping up my 2016 championship. Couldn't, you know, plan that better. Uh, and especially for it to be our first national in New York that me and you have ever, both have ever done. Uh, man, couldn't beat that. Yeah, I remember that. I was in like 10th, I think, and uh, I think you got second that night. Uh, I remember it was good. It's great. What do you think your uh, biggest moment memory is? Uh, I've got a lot, you know, but winning the championships obviously got to be one of the best. It's kind of a crazy story. You know, I never thought I would have the chance. I rode for three different teams that year and uh, ended up winning it at the last round. Is just something like that's unreal. You know, you grew up as a kid, your whole life wanting to win just a race, let alone a championship, and you achieve it. So. Uh, that's got to be my greatest memory. You know, it's something I'll never forget and something my family will never forget. And two New Yorkers in two years. I don't have a sweet lightning bolt, though. ka -chow! You got to do it now. They're not going to... All about going fast, regardless of what class you're in. Let's give you the AFT Twins presented by Vance and Hines. Storylines, this is qualifying racing. 14, Briar Bauman out front, but here comes Brian Smith on the high line, number four. Brian Smith took control of this race early, but Briar Bauman would get under him into turn one. From there, Briar Bauman would not be stopped dominating semi one. And Brandon Robinson then battling Smith for second. And then Bronson Bauman would get around them both. Good run by the Bauman brothers to go one, two. Shout out to Robert Pearson, who would take third. Smith shuffled back to fifth. Not what the former series champ probably wanted out of that one. Great battle here in semi two. Carver on the 23, Mies on the one, Sammy Halbert on the 69. And they're showing the multiple grooves you were talking about. Carver coming off a strong run at Lima, Ohio, showing a lot of speed so far today. Got into the lead early and showing Briar Bauman, hey, you're not the only one that can dominate. I've been waiting for Carver to catch fire this year. It definitely starting to happen now. Kristen had a chance to talk to him after his win. Jeffrey, you're one win away from completing a career grand slam. A win on a short track would guarantee that for you. How do you? get that career grand slam here in Weed Sport tonight? Uh, just try and be comfortable. Right now, I feel at home. I feel like short track racing like I grew up doing. That's the first thing I ever did was little indoor short track racing. I'm just going back to my roots. I definitely know I can take it. It's got to keep a cool, calm mind. Well, it'll be good to see the Wizard up there battling a deep class in that field. You got Mies, Wiles, the Bauman brothers, Brian Smith looking good. and. Maybe an even longer list of contenders in our singles division, but you know the fans want the 94. Ryan Wells, the home track specialist, to take the win. Shayna Texter on the list, top contenders as well. Stay with us. American Flat Track on NBCSN is brought to you by Russ Brown Motorcycle Attorneys. If you go down, call Russ Brown. By Roof Systems of Dallas, Texas, the entitlement sponsor of AFT Singles. 
and by Cat Rental Store, the official heavy equipment supplier of American Flat Track. Here's the Roof Systems AFT Singles point standings. Mikey Rush been so strong. Dalton Gauthier started this year on fire. His struggle the last couple of events. Can he come back and have an opportunity to win this race? Dan Bromley still hanging in there in this championship. Yeah, he's always consistent. Let's get an update from the top three. The comeback kid. This is legit. Dalton Gauthier's comeback includes a victory now in Atlanta. And nothing going for Texter. Mikey Rush has his first win of 2019. We're only going to work on Coast of the Lead. This is fantastic racing. So we're reaching the halfway mark of the season for us. We're sitting really good in the points. We're sitting first in the points. So we're just trying to keep the ball rolling and keep doing what we've been doing week in and week out and improving the bike every weekend and working with the team. We all work really great together. So I think we just got to keep doing what we're doing and stay focused and uh, just go forward. I've been really uh, frustrated with myself, honestly, but it's uh, we've been struggling with the bike. We struggled a little bit at Lima. I think we got a better shock now, thanks to Owens. They helped us out a bit uh, this morning with the new shock and uh, I'm happy being in second. Considering this is my first year back in two years, uh, I'm really happy with how it's going and really excited to see how this night goes. I think the track is gonna play in my favor, so I'm really excited. Last time I raced in New York, I won a national too at Rolling Wheels, so just uh, try and beat Mikey and uh, do the best I can every race. It looks like the KTMs have got it dialed in tonight with a one-two finish in route. For me, next is just trying to get podium finishes. You know, right now, we had some rough starts to the season, getting some ninths and some fifths, but everybody that has been up front on the points with Dalton and with Mikey, they've been on the podium. So for me, being on the podium, and right now, if you win, you get way more points than anybody else. So for me, it's trying to get as many wins as I can. Last year, I had the opportunity to get four wins, where this year, that's gonna be a lot harder with new riders and everybody stepping up their game. So for me, the main goal is just to be on the podium, be as close as I can to the front and try and win this thing. And uh, the more wins I get, the easier it is for me to get more points and hopefully win the championship at the end of the year. Here's AFT single storylines, qualifying highlights. Great battle here, Andrew Luker and Dalton Gauthier going at it in semi one. They would battle this whole semi back and forth, all kinds of lead changes. Luker's been strong all night. Gauthier needing a strong rebound. Coming to the line, Gauthier would just beat Luker for semi-win number one. I love these short track races, man. They're just battling for inches and tenths of a second out there. Shane and Texter third, Avery Stallings round out the top five. Now, some drama in two different directions in semi two. First, the battle up front, Dan Bromley. Champ's been struggling with his starts this year, but he got a good one, and he was in the battle with Chad Coase. Coming to the line, it'd be Morgan Mishler trying to chase down Dan Bromley but he would get the victory. Now here's the other drama. Watch in the back, the red Honda number 15, Mikey Rush, just gets edged out by the number 27 of Shane Darbone for the final transfer spot into the main. That is your points leader, and he's being informed right here that he does not qualify. Here it is. About a half a bike length, the difference between Darbone and the 27 and the 15 of Rush, who could not make up for the bad start. He's obviously frustrated talking to Richie Morris, it's team owner right there. Let's talk to Rush. I don't get a provisional start for this class because I didn't race this class last year, so you have to have points from the previous year. And I'm usually in the Twins class, so I just don't have a provisional in this class, which is a bummer for us. We're leading the points, and I'm sure we're going to lose that tonight, but we're going to come back harder and harder the rest of the year, and then we're going to try to get that back. Yes, because riders like Dalton Gauthier who could overtake him in points, and several others have to figure this is the golden opportunity they were looking for. That includes Shayna Texter. She struggled in the TT events early in the season, but she's good on these short tracks. Same thing with Ryan Wells, who's been adjusting to the Yamaha and getting faster by the week. Here's Kristen. With Mikey Rush ineligible for a provisional, there's an opportunity for Dalton Gauthier to close in on the points. But something to be noted, Dan Bromley is now the only singles class rider in the 2019 season to earn points in every main event. Now, I just caught up with both riders, Dan Bromley and Dalton Gauthier. Uh, Dan Bromley said it is going to be hard to pass. So to get this win, he has to have a quality start, and he is 100% focused on the win. Dalton Gauthier, on the other hand, said, I just want to stay calm and focused. He said, honestly, I would be fine with a top three. I just want to leave here with the points lead and build a gap on Mikey Rush. Guys? 
So here's your Russ Brown motorcycle attorney starting lineup and Gautier's in prime position with the top grid spot. Riders like Gautier, Bromley, Texter, these riders see that Rush is not in this main event. They know they have to maximize their points tonight to make up that championship difference. What a huge swing this could be. Rush can do nothing but watch it. Probably doesn't even want to. Gote is going to try to take the win here on the Gobert Smash number 122. Here we go from New York. And Bromley this time a good start. He's been struggling with that all year, but he's out front. Gautier, Luker, and Texter all right there. Down the back straightaway, Bromley into turn three with the lead. Shana Texter running second, Luker strong in third. Red Bull KTMs, they went 1-2 in the reverse order in our last race, and they're 1-2 again. So obviously those motorcycles are coming around, but Andrew Luker not impressed by the factory machinery. He wants to beat them, running close in third. Down into turn three here. We see Gautier sliding into fourth. He's been fast all night. Got three fast riders trying to get around. Yeah, that start not what he wanted, though, turning that pole position into fourth. Almost got passed by Morgan Mischler for fifth and then RN69. Now he's going back after Luker for third. Gautier down the low line. Gautier has been so strong be able Whoa. to run right around the inside of that white line. We got three wide down the front straight away for the lead. He almost went from fourth to first. Meanwhile, Texter taking the lead away from her teammate Bromley. But there is Gautier to take second. Bromley going to try to fire back. Now he's on the low line that Gautier had been using. Multiple group racing here in New York. I, where, I don't even know how Gautier got back down to the inside, but he's going to try to make it work. Gautier is getting such great drive off the corners. Under Shane and Texter down the back straight in for the lead. He's got it into turn three. Uh, one point, he had almost dropped back to fifth, and now within two laps, he's gone to the number one spot and starting to march away from Bromley. This is not what the rest of the field wants to see. Gautier with the lead. He is so smooth in the middle of these corners right now, starting to pull away. Five bike length lead over Bromley. And the privateer, the Kieran Racing, Kawasaki Luker right there, battling with the Red Bull KTMs and trying to get around Texter for third. Can't quite make it happen. Texter and Bromley still going at it as well. All right, Bromley's going to try to put his head down now. Can he keep Gautier in sight? Texter and Luker have went back and forth, undercut each other for the last four corners. Luker round the outside. Cleater this time into third. Little mistake from Texter helped Luker out. See if she can regroup. Bromley's done it though. He's not allowing Gautier to stretch the lead any further. It's about five bike lengths here. Top six bikes have pulled away here. We got Kevin Stallings in fifth. Morgan Mischler in sixth. This train starting to pull away from the rest of the field. Luker, a mistake by Bromley, similar to Texter and Luker looking to take advantage again. Big race off the corner, and Bromley wins it. Bromley cuts off his line into turn three, runs the bottom. Luker lifts early, gets that throttle down on the front straightaway here. Can't quite get it done. And this would be big momentum after the KTMs went one, two in the last race. It looked like they were making the championship push. Big response here from Gautier to pass them both. Watching Texter battling it out right now with Mischler. He's going to shuffle back to fifth now. Mischler up to fourth. Started sixth, up to fourth, starting to make it up through the field. We're halfway through this race already. Mischler came on strong in the latter laps of his semi, and he's figuring it out here. Clearing Texter, now going after Luker. This would be for a podium spot. The green and the orange battling for third. Mischler seems to be very strong. He's starting to ride where the other riders are into turn one here. I've noticed running really high compared to most of the riders. He's trying to go around the outside of Luker. Doesn't quite get it done. Turns back under him, though. Clears him into third. Wow, what a drive off the corner. So, yeah, he's up to third. Let's see if he can do something with Bromley up ahead of him. Don't count out Texter and Stallings, who have closed back in. All this action, yet somehow they're keeping the leader, Dalton Gauthier, in sight. Can he hang on in the second half of the New York short track in the singles division? Stay with us. Back to the New York short track. Fantastic racing in our singles division in American flat track. Dalton Gauthier trying to get away now. But this battle continues to rage. You got Shayna Texter, Andrew Luker, Kevin Stallings, fourth, fifth, and sixth. 
It was a podium battle at one point, but Morgan Mishler just up ahead got the drop on them. Texter doing everything she can to fight off Luker right now. This is critical for Shayna Texter, trying to get all the points that she can. With Rush not in the main event, she has a golden opportunity to make up a ton of points. Not making mains has really been the story this year. Texter missed a few on the TTs. Gautier missed one. Now our points leader tonight. Oh, Mishler just went by Bromley like Bromley was standing still, but couldn't hold it. Bromley going to get him back. Mishler drove it in so hard into turn one. Wasn't able to get that bike stopped. Gets passed back for Bromley. Back to second. Two different battles to watch in that race for second. They're still side by side. Mishler getting Bromley again. Let's see if he can make it stick this time. Mishler back by Waters, auto body, d, d performance, coming out of Wisconsin. Woo, they almost went down. Mishler is flying right now. He's figured out a line that nobody else can run. He's starting to track down Gautier for the lead. Oh, we got a rider down, that's Tristan Avery. Will the Wheeling caution lights come on? That would take away the entire gap. No, he's back up and okay. I don't see the Wheeling caution lights, so racing will continue. So that's going to help Gautier maintain a little bit of a gap out front while we watch this battle for fourth. But I think Mishler might be able to catch him anyway. As you said, he is flying. Two to go right now. Morgan Mishler is chasing him down. He's probably not going to have enough time, unfortunately. We'll see. White flag will be in view as Texter, Stallings, and Luker just continue to swap fourth, fifth, and sixth. Looks like Bromley's all alone in third, but podiums are what the champ does. He's been the most consistent rider this year. All right, so Ron McClendon hoping for a win number two on the season for Gautier. Had a nice gap at one point. Mishler just keeps on closing. Mishler going to make one more stab and to turn three at it, but I don't think he's going to get there, Jason. Time's up. All Gautier needs is a drive off the corner, and he's got his second win of the year. And most importantly, that should put him back in the points lead. After he dealt with his own drama by not making a main event earlier in the season, he has battled all the way back. He congratulates Mishler on a great ride. But to the victor go the spoils. And there's McClendon, the man they call Robbie Bobby. He is just as happy. Gautier has credited him as the one who rebuilt his career. They got him on a bike right before this season. They've been chasing the setup all year long, but when they get it right, they are hard to beat. Gautier also throwing a shout out to Jimmy Wood, the suspension man, longtime helper. Oh, look at this for Jared Meese, who helped set up the rear shock on that bike. And that group got it done. Robbie Bobby going to go for the ride of the victory lap. And take that machine all the way to the top of the standings. Bromley doing what he does, grabbing podiums to stay in title contention. Texter got out battled. I thought it could have been her night. Yeah, Kevin Stallings got around her on the last corner there for fourth and a couple more points that she didn't gain. Let's send it down to Kristen Beat with our winner. Dalton, you know, before this race, you told me I would be okay with the top three. I just want to settle in and re-earn the points lead, and you did just that. Dalton, what does this do for your championship hopes? Well, that just helped my confidence a bunch. I can tell you that, and uh, I'm so stoked to be up here. I've been feet, I want to win so bad today, and uh, the bike was handling awesome. I can't thank Jimmy Wood from Owens enough. He had my shock working great, and uh, we can finally say this bike's definitely getting better. Uh, first time we won on it this season, and uh, I just got to thank all my sponsors uh, for getting me out here, and uh, the comeback season's alive, and uh, I'm having so much fun riding my motorcycle, and uh, I'm so ecstatic right now. Yes, even more ecstatic when he looks at the now 13-point lead he has over Rush. Bromley still in striking distance as well. Janish, Wells, Texter, they're going to need some more luck and a strong close. Let's send it back to Kristen B. Morgan Mishler with his second podium of the 2019 season. Morgan, right after that race, you had said, I wish there were a few more laps. Maybe I could have gotten it done. Yeah, it'd be interesting in 25 laps. I, you know, I, I know I was charging hard. I don't know how long the tires would have last, but... You know, we, we definitely came from a ways back, kind of did our, shot ourselves in the foot with, with not that great of a start, but, you know, we charged through the pack, made it, like, we were right there knocking on the door just like Atlanta. Great venue. Looking forward to five more years coming back. Yeah, new contract signed with this track, so he likes that. And Bromley also smiling, starting to turn it around, back-to-back -back podiums for last year's champion. Dan Bromley rounding out the podium tonight. Dan, 
you had told me right before that race, you wanted the start and you got it. But unfortunately, in those closing laps, Morgan Mischler had you outnumbered. Yeah, you know, we, we did what we needed to do is get a good start and be up in the front the first 10 laps. And that's my main goal. And to be able to say I came up here and pretty much did what we did in Atlanta, I'm, I'm happy, but I'm still a little bummed. You know, I wanted to be able to catch Dawn, but he ran a perfect race. He had one or two hiccups, but I wasn't able to capitalize. And then Morgan was able to just get around me on the outside with a few laps to go, which it's always a bummer, but he was riding great. And I'd like to give a big shout out to my family back home watching. Thank you for all you do, and I really appreciate you. That's his father, Joe. Daddy deep pockets, as he calls him. Meanwhile, Robbie Bobby got his man to victory lane. He's going to hug everybody. And we're pumped to have the Honda talent and special Dunlop tires developed to help groove in these racetracks. More on that when we return. American Flat Track on NBCSN is brought to you by Indian Motorcycle. Be legendary. By Vance and Hines, the presenting sponsor of AFT Twins. By American Flat Tracker Clothing Company. Find your groove at AmericanFlatTracker.com. Just witnessed a great main event in the AFT singles division. Now it's time for the New York Short Track main in the AFT Twins. But first, an update on some new technology we're using to help groove these racetracks and make them race that much better. We've got the Honda Talon and also from Dunlop Motorcycle Tires, Mike Buckley. Mike, the whole group at Dunlop Tire has been working really hard to get this tire ready for this weekend to be dragged behind the Honda Talon to increase the competition for these racers in the American Flat Track Series. Yeah, it's a really a good story. Uh, the competition folks at American Flat Track came to us with this uh, this issue. They wanted to get the talent out there, really to push the dirt out to the edge and widen the groove. And what they found in early testing was using the stock tires was causing a problem because the rubber was coming off the tires and laying on the groove. And of course, in AFT, we're using Dunlop tires and they're especially compound. So. What would happen is the riders would have some issues and, uh, and possibly traction issues with this contaminated or different rubber. So the request came to us, what could we do? So we worked with our partner, our partner company, Falcon Tire, to develop these Sincera 250 tires. And what we basically did is ordered up special tires, one off. There's no other tire like this in the world. We put the R8 compound on, which is very close. In, it's in the middle of our compound offerings for AFT. And basically now the tire will lay that type of rubber. The riders will have a smooth transition from the normal line to the wider line. And what we all believe is, at the end of the day, it's going to improve the racing. It'll give the riders more options. They'll be able to move out to that farther line, uh, more passing options, better for the fans, better for the sport. Let's continue the Dunlop tire talk. What about the race bikes? What tire compound are they going with tonight? Yeah, Jason, they have the option between the R5, the softer compound, and the R8, the harder compound. All the riders are gonna go with the R5, the softer compound. They haven't seen a lot of wear so far tonight. Going for maximum traction, especially as this track starts to dry out and get slick. Gonna be a great main event in the AFT Twins class, and it'll be coming up next on NBCSN. We are set for the main event, the AFT Twins class of the New York Short Track stacked field of talent on the line. Let's get one last update from Kristen. I asked Briar Brownman if he enjoyed the weekend off, and he said no, he said, but Shayna did. Obviously, I asked him to elaborate, and he told me that after a DNF, after a bad start like he had in Lima, he said, all you want to do is get back out there, guys. Briar Bauman is racing for a rebound tonight, and that is so telling of his character. If he falls down, he wants to get back up. Even with an injury, he wants to push through it. There's just no quit in Briar's vocabulary this year, and that is bad news for the rest of the field, guys. Jared Mees is going to try to make him quit, at least leading those point standings, putting the heat on after winning our last race at Lima. Jeffrey Carver has been very fast so far tonight and today this starting lineup, I'd say, geez, nine or eight of these guys could all win it. Yeah, for sure, Briar Baum and Jeffrey Carver have been quick. Jared Meese hasn't been quite on the pace. I'm interested to see if he can figure out something in the main event and try to take it to his teammate. That's what the veteran often does, improves as the night goes on. They're all trying to chase the 14 of Bauman right now. Let's go racing at the New York Short Track. Good jump for Bronson Bauman on the 37, Briar's younger brother. Let's see if he can use the high line to maintain the lead. No, right down to the bottom. 
Briar Bauman holds it. Into turn three here, Jeffrey Carver sending it. Bronson Bauman on the outside makes a mistake. Jeffrey Carver, good drive off turn four, gonna lead the first lap. So the Wizards got it right now on the 23, the Bauman brothers duking it out right behind them. Meads trying to use a low line, battling with the 17 of Henry Wiles. But right now, Jeffrey Carver is the man in the point position. Henry Wiles up to fourth there behind Bronson Bauman. Going into turn one, Breyer looking to try to find a way to get around Jeffrey Carver. Just running the low lines all the way around this track is Breyer. Let's see if it works. He's side by side now with Carver. And he makes the pass. On board with Breyer Bauman, the Indian motorcycle on board. Going into turn one here, he leads lap three. Going to start to try to pull away. Oh, but Carver right back. A oh, little bobble there. Couldn't get the grip he wanted. I thought he had the pass made. Big juncture in the race right now. Bauman going to try to check out. Carver wants to stay with him. And they're beginning to clear the third place rider, Bronson Bauman. I love the onboards. You can hear the gearing, that short gear to get off the corner. Get that launch on the rev limiter halfway down the back straightaway. Briar Bauman just starting to pull away. Really has it dialed in right now, so we'll switch to this. Wiles putting big pressure on the 37 of Bronson Bauman to try to take third away. Where is Jared Meese? He's actually been shuffled backwards. See his old nemesis to number four, Brian Smith moving up. Been a rough season for Smith so far, but showing some signs of life. Jared Meese really just trying to fight inside the top 10 right now. Struggling really bad, back to eight. Davis Fisher, 67, one of the young talents in this sport, battling it out with Smith and Robert Pearson running the high line in this great three rider battle just outside of the podium spots. We can see the racetrack get that little dry, slick look to it, hard packed. These riders are starting to search around, try to find anywhere to find a little bit of moisture to get that grip. Battle continues with Fisher, Pearson, and Smith. Smith on that Howerton Crosley machine with Kawasaki engine. We found Mies here battling with the 20 of Vanderkoy, but he is in eighth place with the SNS on board at the moment. Jared Meese just struggling all day. Hasn't figured out into the main event. You can see, I love this shot. Him working, trying to figure out, moving his body around, trying to find if he can get some grip in this motorcycle. I'll tell you, he's got the grip right now. It's a 17 of Wiles. He's close right up now to the rear tire of Bauman. Cannot make the move. Bauman goes high. Is that the opening that Wiles is looking for? I think it was. Got it. Henry Wiles clears Bronson Bauman. He finished third at Lima, Ohio. They've really started to find this, this speed in this program. Starting to go into a season where Henry Wiles loves some of the racetracks that are coming up on this schedule. Yeah, Wiles and second place rider Carver pretty far back in points. They didn't start the series the way they wanted, but they are going to be spoilers if they continue to ride like this. Meanwhile, let's go to Kristen with an update from fourth place. Bronson Bauman told me that this track resembles Lodi, a track he rode growing up in California. Now, during the off week, he said he trained with his brother. He raced motocross in New Jersey. They got some laps in. He said he is feeling really confident moving into this race. He wasn't a factor in qualifying or even in the semis, but he's really settled in tonight. Guys, this is a perfect example of the track working its way to the bike. Lodi, Jason, shout out to NorCal. Bronson Bauman having a strong run right now in fourth. Can he chase down Henry Wiles? to get back on that podium. Fine, I'll throw the shout out to New Jersey. Or we'll take it either way. The Bauman brothers, I mean, they spent some time in Florida, and Pennsylvania. All these riders trying to figure out the proper tracks to test and develop the equipment. Checking out Mies here. It's Davis Fisher on the 67 is broken away from Smith, who's now gonna have to deal with the number one. As for Fisher, his best finish this year is an eight. It's a nice step up for him, trying to make a bid for the top five. Here's Mies, and he made the move on Smith now, so that's seventh place for the champ. Back on the SNS on board, Jared Mies just searching, trying to find something. His teammate, the points leader, Briar Bauman, is gone. Going to stretch the points lead back out if it finishes like this. Jared Mies got to get everything he can in points and position to just try to salvage the night. Two or three times this year, Bauman doesn't have the best race. Mies gets a win. You think now the champ's got a hook in him. But Briar Bauman has been able to bounce back each time. It's Mies just trying to get into the top five tonight. Briar Bauman pulling away out front.
Bowman didn't take it long to wrestle the lead away from Jeffrey Carver tonight, and now Carver is gone and can't see anyone else either. What a dominant response after not finishing the last race with a mechanical problem. Meanwhile, good battle back here. Bronson Bowman has not let the 17 of Henry Wiles go. You got Pearson on the 27 in striking distance as well. For sure, shout out to Robert Pearson having a very strong run inside the top five, but Briar Bauman, he's gone. He is destroying this field right now. Jason, he's impressed me so much this year. I thought maybe, okay, his first DNF, is that where maybe the mind, he starts to come apart a little bit. Shows up here at Weedsport, says, nah, -uh, I'm gonna take it to this field and show I am the championship leader. I want to be the champion. Yeah, and honestly, he was the points leader mostly based on consistency. He's only won one other race that was our opener at Daytona. So to dominate like this is actually a step up from where he's been for the majority of the season. Let's send it down to Kristen with more on second place. Today I asked Jeffrey Carver if he's back. He kind of laughed. He said mentally he is back to where he needs to be. He said he's been living simple. He's been riding. He's been training. His wrist is also back to 100%. We are seeing a Jeffrey Carver who could very well secure a career Grand Slam tonight. Yeah, he'd need that win and what that is the four different disciplines, TT, short track, half mile, and mile. He's won three of those four. Needs a short track win to complete the career Grand Slam. He's gonna need some luck though because Bauman's got everyone covered tonight. Well, check back in with Mies. I'll tell you what, he's determined. Might not have his best stuff tonight, but he's gonna do everything he can to maximize his position and cut at least the loss of points. This is how you win championships. It's not always on your best night. It's how you make your worst night and shorten that distance of points that you're losing. So right now, Jared Mee is fighting, doing everything he can to try to get every position possible out there. And it's such an interesting dynamic between he and Bauman. At one point, Bauman was kind of the understudy, learning, training, and both of them have said they've had to adjust the mindset. They're still friendly with each other, but now they know it's essentially a championship gonna be settled between the two of them. And that is going to change things, especially as we go to the second half of this championship. Doesn't matter how many points Bauman has on Mies. Mies is going to be a threat. Five to go. You watch Wiles come through in third. Bronson Bauman in fourth on the 37. Little mistake there on the entrance. Davis Fisher not too far back. Pearson on the 27. Let's see if we get a little change in the order in the latter laps here in New York. You can see Bronson Bauman, he's running a different line. He's running very high into turn one. There's a little bit of moisture up there. We were talking about that. He's doing everything he can to see if he can find that little bit of extra grip. He won our last short track race. And still showing some skills in fourth. A lot of lap traffic out there right now, but it's not quite close enough. The gap between first and second. There's to Salvo, the mechanic for Breyer. She's certainly nervous watching these laps click off. But as I was saying, the lappers He's getting deep into it, but he has enough of a gap over Carver that it's not that much to worry about. Yeah, and what I really notice about Briar Bauman as we come two to go here on this factory Indian motorcycle, you see all the riders, they're sliding around, the bikes are dancing, they're trying to hang on to it. Briar Bauman, as we watch off turn two, that bike's not moving, he's on the back seat, got the traction down on that R5 Dunlop rear tire, just driving away. Every lap, one to go, Jason. And all day, he's been crediting Dave Zanotti, who's been with him even before he was part of the factory Indian team. He and DeSalvo moved over there with Breyer. Credits the team for helping him lock down that low line. It worked in qualifying. It worked in the semi. And it has worked for virtually every lap of the main event. Breyer Bauman is going to respond from some heartbreak at the previous event to win big here in New York. Great run by Carver to take second. Wiles up on the podium in third. So those two are starting to turn their programs around and become threats, but they weren't able to stay close to Briar Bauman tonight, who takes his second victory of 2019. The rest of this field's got to be wondering what's going on. The last two years, they've had to deal with Jared Meese yeah. dominating. They think, OK, Jared Meese, maybe not as fast as he once was the last couple of years, or is Briar Bauman just stepping the program up that much more? Yeah, either way, it's a factory India taking the majority of the wins. Knees back in seventh behind Fisher, so he's gonna have to regroup again. Brandon Robinson, eighth, also not what he wanted. He's a point standings contender as well. Smith all the way back to 10th. So a lot of riders gonna be scratching their head after this one. Go to a move of the race. Bauman had to make one pass. That's how he did it.
Into turn three here. Got a great drive off turn two. Briar Bauman gets around Jeffrey Carver. And unfortunately for the rest of the field, that would be the last time they see Briar Bauman until the checkered flag. Yep, he locked down the lead and was gone. Carver held close for a couple of laps with a 14, a dominant win. And again, everybody with that crew, they integrated the Zanotti Racing Program into the factory Indian effort, and it has worked beautifully. Briar and his brother Bronson have been very strong this year. Ascended to Kristen in victory lane. Briar Bauman's second win of the 2019 season in the American Flat Track Twins class. Briar, we have not seen you take a win since Daytona. Obviously, I mean, a big rebound for you. Coming out of Lima, you had told me earlier in the day after a DNF, you just want to get back out there. And as I had said right before this race, there's no quit in your guys' vocabulary this year. There just isn't. No, I have the greatest team in the world behind me. I can't thank them enough. Indian Motorcycle, Powered by Progressive, SNS Cycle, JP Cycles, everyone, thank you so much. But, yeah, I was so bitter after the last one, not because I didn't get to fight for the win, but I just didn't get to fight at all. I, uh, I look up to Jared a lot. I look up to Jeffrey a lot and Henry a lot. Those guys are so strong at, at Lima, and I wanted to be a part of it. You know, that was a goal of mine. So to miss out on it, I was just bitter that I didn't get to race. So coming back, we came back swinging, and I can't thank them enough. This is, uh, this is what we wanted. Looking into these numbers over the last two seasons, 2018 versus 2019, Briar Bauman, shocking, only two wins, but look at that average finish, 3.4, and that is with a last place at Lima, Ohio. Five poles, eight podiums out of nine events. That's what you call being fast, being consistent, and right now being dominant in this 2019 season for Briar Bauman. Everyone else back to the drawing board to try to stop this guy, but again, we're only halfway through the championship. Let's talk to the other riders on the podium in New York after this. American Flat Track on NBCSN is brought to you by Vance and Hines, the presenting sponsor of AFT Twins. By Roof Systems of Dallas, Texas, the entitlement sponsor of AFT Singles. And by American Flat Tracker Clothing Company, Find your groove at AmericanFlatTracker.com. Sunoco Go the Distance Award standings. Jeffrey Carver has amassed the most miles when we combine qualifying and racing and practice throughout the season. Bauman Brothers right there as well. And as far as the point standings in the AFT Twins division, here's the big change. Mees 26 back now. Jared Mees lost 13 points tonight. Briar Bauman now 26 point lead. Brandon Robinson, three tough weeks in a row, finishing eighth tonight, 51 back. Let's send it back to Kristen on the podium. Jeffrey, back to back podiums. After that race, your crew chief, Ben Evans, and you were discussing the bike dancing around a little bit in those final laps. How did that affect you during the race? Um, you know, it was good enough to be second place, and uh, we just keep trying to make movements going forward. And, uh, you know, the roof systems from Dallas, Texas, Indian is working amazing, and uh, we're starting to get our groove back, and Owens has been backing us, and we're, we're finding our suspension settings, and uh, I'm just getting comfortable and at home, and that's what it takes to be running up front for me. You had said earlier in the day to me that you've just been living simple, you've been riding, and you're back to where you need to be. Can we expect more of these kind of performances from you? I'd love to say so, you know, I'm just going to keep working at it. Uh, um, like uh, Scotty Dugler says, I think I might have my mojo back, so that's what we're working on. Yeah, Scotty, the live announcer here at AFT, and also getting a visit to the podium for the second straight race. Henry Wiles starting to hammer him. Let's send it back to Kristen. Henry, earlier in the day we had touched on this and talked about it a little, but how challenging was it to stay ahead of the track today? It was very challenging, uh, you know, we were fast qualifier here last year and, and went backwards all main event. Um, so this year we knew we had to make a change and the track was really good in practice. We knew it was going to change, but we were trying to make changes to qualify decent. And then we ended up going back to our setup that we originally came here with. So I was really happy that we were able to capitalize on mistakes from last year and, and make it better this year. Um, you know. Last week I got the third and I wasn't so happy about that, but this week I'm, I'm a lot happier about our third place on this clay track because we've we struggled here in the past. So, you know, I'm, I'm pretty stoked to uh, get on the podium this weekend and I couldn't be happier for my whole banded chippers team and uh, Brian Beagle and everybody support me. Okay, now for something completely different. Our next race, the Buffalo Chip TT, is like nothing else. Man, one of my favorite races to watch Jason, they race around a bar. 
can we just uh, do the show from the bar? I, I put in my vote, and it's also part of the Sturgis Bike Week, which is also unlike anything else. So you want to check out that one on August 10th. As for the racing tonight, good stuff for the New York Short Track. Big win in singles for Dalton Gauthier, and maybe even bigger with the 14 of Briar Bauman winning in the Twins class. For A.J. Allmendinger and Kristen Beat, I'm Jason Wygant saying thanks for watching. We'll see you from Buffalo Chip.